place of coffee, where it was discovered in the first century AD. In Yergacheffe, Ethiopian coffee is grown in a subtropical forest on small one to three acre garden farms in the Rift Valley between 5,800 and 6,500 feet of elevation. The coffee grows in the shade of the forest trees, is picked by hand, and fertilized with organic waste. Typically, it takes from three to four years after planting for a coffee tree to produce fruit. The coffee tree produces a white blossom. When fruiting begins around September, only the red cherries are picked. A tree is usually picked every 10 to 14 days throughout the four-month season. The coffee farmer transports his crop by foot or hoof to the closest processing plant within a half day's walk. He can also sell it to a local broker who will collect cherries all day, then transport them to the plant in the evening. The farmer is paid for the cherries when they deliver the coffee to the plant or broker. Throughout the day, the red cherries are brought to the plant and placed in a large cement hopper directly above the mechanical pulping equipment. Workers pick out any leaves, sticks, and debris from the cherries. Then each night, the red cherries are processed. As you can see here, the coffee cherry contains two beans, the pit of the cherry, the seed. There's also a pea berry, and that's one that only has one pit in it. Those are fairly rare, tend to be a denser bean, and a lot of times have a brighter flavor. Water is pumped from a nearby stream during the day to holding tanks uphill of the processing equipment. The water is then gravity fed to the various processes. A small gate is opened to allow the cherries to flow from the hopper into the pulping equipment. While the flow of cherries is assisted by water, special equipment uses discs to rub the cherry pulp off the two beans that are inside. This is one of the streams that they use in the coffee processing plant. This is actually considered fresh water. As you can see, it's very muddy, though it is fairly clean. The problem is, is that the process develops a lot of wastewater, and that can't be put back into the stream. When we talk about sustainability, what we want to do is be able to clean that water so that it can actually go back into the environment cleaner than it was when it came out. The coffee beans are collected in large cement vats and soaked for 24 to 36 hours. This allows the sticky mucilage that coats the bean to ferment. This fermentation process loosens the mucilage so that it can be removed by washing. Men will agitate the beans in the vat periodically to aid in the fermentation process. After this, the vat is drained and the high sugar content water is sent to a pit to absorb into the soil and evaporate so that it does not pollute the stream. Fresh water is used to wash the coffee in cement flues. After the coffee has been washed through agitation by rakes, it flows to collection tanks. The slope of the flue is designed to allow the lighter beans to float on top and the denser beans to stay on the bottom. The lighter beans are diverted into a separate tank to be dried separately and sold for local consumption. Here they're taking the coffee that has been washed. They carry it in these baskets to the drying tables. This has been washed of the sticky mucilage that was on the outside from the pulping process. Here they're bringing in the coffee that's just been washed and they're going to put it on the uh, screen to drip dry overnight. This is the, the first part of the drying process. The sticky mucilage has been removed from the bean through the washing process and they'll start picking through this coffee to pull out any of the, the malformed coffee or damaged beans. This process of covering and uncovering takes place constantly throughout the drying process to ensure quality and consistency. Women sort through the coffee for malformed and damaged beans and also agitate the coffee to assist in even drying, singing while they work. Coffee is separated into three grades at the plant. The first grade is exportable coffee. This here is second grade coffee and it would be sold within the country. And the third grade would be for local consumption only. After the coffee is dried, 
It is bagged and carried to the plant warehouse, where it is unbagged to allow the coffee to breathe and age for a couple of weeks. It is then rebagged, loaded on a truck, inspected, tarped and sealed for transport to Addis Ababa for final processing. At the Coffee and Tea Authority in Addis Ababa, the coffee is inspected and cupped to document grade and quality. This is about what it takes for a morning pot of coffee. The uh, color and the size of the bean has to do with the silver skin that's on the outside. After seven to ten days of drying, they'll send this coffee up to Addis Ababa where it will be processed and the silver skin will be removed. Final processing, called polishing, removes the silver skin from the coffee before it is placed in labeled bags. The bags are stored by lot for each producer and readied for export. Only coffee of the highest quality is exported. Most coffee is sold at auction in Addis Ababa. Plants that have formed cooperatives, such as the Kebeta Kumza plant, are allowed to bypass the auction and sell direct to exporters and buyers around the world. Export coffee is loaded by hand in sea containers containing 300 bags. Each container is then shipped by truck to the port at Djibouti, where they are loaded onto a ship. After the container arrives at its port of destination and clears customs, it is delivered by truck to a bonded warehouse where it is stored in environmentally controlled conditions to maintain proper temperature and moisture content. The coffee is then roasted, bagged and distributed to a wholesale or retail outlet, and ultimately to the end consumer.